Father, I want to thank you because each time we pray, you hear us. This morning, in this communion service, we ask for your help. We ask for your help, Lord. We exclude every work of the enemy. We deliver as many that ought to be with us this morning online, any of the uh, social media, to be with us to worship this morning. We ask by the power of the Holy Ghost that they will all be brought into this place so that by the time we're done, we have every cause to give glory to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Great. This morning we're going to be looking at reciprocating his love. Reciprocating his love. That's what we're looking at. This third Sunday, communion service, turn with me to Songs of Solomon, chapter 2. That's the word that the Lord gave us for the, for the month of uh, July. Make sure you are turning your Bible. Turn your Bible to Songs of Solomon, chapter 2. So, so Solomon, chapter 2. We're going to read from verse 1 to 8. Now, I like you, as our custom is, I want us to, make, to proclaim it. I want us to proclaim it. we we'll read it together. In other words, irrespective of your version at home, we're going to proclaim that this passage together. I want to go, Sons of Solomon, chapter 2. Sons of Solomon is after Ecclesiastes. It's after Ecclesiastes. Sons of Solomon is after Ecclesiastes. Now, I want to go. And I, I am the rose of Sharon the lily of the valleys. As the lily among tongues, so is my love among daughters. And the apple tree among the trees of wood, so is my love among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with a great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Stay me with flagons and comfort me with apples, for I am sick of love. His left hand is under my head, and his right hand doth embrace me. I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the robes and by the heels of the feet, that ye steer not up, nor wake, awake my Lord, till he is he please. The voice of my beloved, Behold, he come and leaping upon the mountains and skipping upon the hills. The Lord bless his word this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this morning, I'm going to be sharing with you reciprocating his love. Of course, who are we talking about? Talking about Jesus. Reciprocating his love. That is like returning his love. Showing him love. Showing, show, showing back to him the love he shows up. Now, you know, when you look at, you know, you see this passage, this uh, uh, chapter written by Solomon, it shows Solomon's gift of expression for his wife. Solomon's gift of expression for his wife. But when you look at it in the light of our relationship with Christ, it is symbolic. Solomon in this account represents Jesus and his bride represents the church. That's in a symbolic manner. That's the way to look at it. Now, that's the way to look at it. Now, Rose of Sharon, here, Rose of Sharon, you know, when we talk about Rose of Sharon, it is, you know, uh, it, 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 it grows up like a flower or tree that grows up only in the top of the mountains. The account says it's only refined in the top of the mountain. It is considered precious treasure in the ancient world. You find it, like a tree, you find it there. You know, you find it there. It's beautiful, it's nice. That's where you find it, but only in the mountains. Something precious. So, to find it requires climbing to treacherous peaks of altitude. For you to be able to get it, you have to climb and go to the altitude very well before you can find, you can find, you know, uh, you know rose of shadow. Before you can find it, you have to climb. Jesus said, I am the rose of shadow. 
It means that something precious, before you can find it, before you can locate it, you climb to high altitude, treacherous high altitude, where people can nearly almost fall. Then they also say, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. That is to say, lily, another beautiful and wonderful plant, a good flower, but you find this in the valley, while the other one is found on the mountain. You know, what a contrast. So you have two extreme environments. One is mountainous, on the, found in mountainous region, and one is found where? In the valley. And you know, the, the two extreme environments are constructed with another, you know, and, and, and with one another, one in the mountains and one in the valley. Do you understand? So, symbolically, one may say that it represents the God of the mountains and the God of the valleys. In other words, if you, because you are precious in God's sight, if you are there, you say, I'm, I'm the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. In the mountains, God will be with you. And at the time, when you are high up, your high moment, God is with you. And your low moment, he, Jesus is also with you. One can symbolically say, he say, I am the, the, the rose of Sharon and the lily of valley. I don't know which, wherever you might be, what challenge you might be going through, but I want you to know that God is with you in the valley as well as is with you, even you know, in, the, in, in the mountain, you know, in your good moment is with you. Is with you there. So it's both with you on high and both with you in your moment, ready to show you love in any condition you find yourself. That's the kind of God that we serve. That's the kind of Jesus that you are. In high moment and with you in low moment. With you in high moment and with you in low moment. It's with you. It's with you. It's so ready to show you love in any of this situation, in any of this condition. That's the kind of God that you serve. That's the kind of Jesus that you have. Yes, it's your rose of shower and is your lily in the valley. Is there with you. Oh, it's not a God that is selective. It's not a God that is selective. Say, ah, oh, no. I only identify with those that are high up. I don't identify with those who are low. No, he's not. He will be with you. He will be with you anywhere you find yourself. So, so you have those two. So number two, you find that in verse two. You find that in verse two. He says, you know, in verse two, he says, as the lily among thorns, so is my, so as the lily among thorns, so is my beloved among the daughters. Mm. You know, lily symbolizes sweetness. You know, it symbolizes sweetness, it symbolizes happiness. So, you say, as the lily among tongues. So, when you, the way you find lily among tongues, you say, so is my love among the daughters. Yes. He, you know, he say he is the lily. So, it means that he is with you even when you are in the midst of tongues. Should you be in the midst of tongues? He's there with you to protect. Why is he there with you? To protect you and be your source of joy. You know that the, the situation that we are today, the world that we are today, is full of all sorts of things. But the Lord says, I am with you. I am with you. I am with you in the midst of tongues. I don't know who I'm talking to. You may be feeling like quitting, but the lily of the valley is with you in the midst of tongues. He's right there with you in that office. He's right there with you in that place of business. He's right there with you wherever it might be. He is right there with you. He's right there with you in the midst of tongues. The third thing I want to quickly tell you in, uh, is in, in verse 3, which will be our number 3. Verse 3, which will be number 3. He says, as the apple among the trees of wood, so is my beloved among the sons. Hmm? I sat under, under his shadow and great delight at his fruit. 
sweet on my taste, as an apple tree among the trees of me. Number three, he said, because of his love for you, you are so special. You are special among many. Among many, you are special. There may be thousand and one people, you are special. They may say 1,000 people apply for a job. Out of them, you are special. You become the apple in the midst of the wood. That's what you become. You are not just anybody. You are not just everybody. You are the apple. You are there. You are not just anybody. What, you know, anybody. The question I will ask you is, what value did you attach to? Value do you place on yourself? What value do you place on yourself? Don't allow anyone to talk you down. You are an apple tree among the woods. That's who you are. You are special. Hey, yeah, who going to marry me? There are so many, few brothers. You are an apple among the tree. You're going to say, many things have happened. No, look at my condition. Uh, look at my age. You are an apple among the tree. You know why? Because Rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, is on your case. Jesus is showing you love. Big time. You're different. You're different. You are not just ordinary. Point number four, this morning. You have me. You know, point number four, we find that in verse four. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. He has brought you. This is taking you from the kingdom of darkness and translated you to the kingdom of his dear son. So life is brought you there. And what did he come here to do for you? He's there to show you love. He's there to show you love. He's there to show you love. Point number four. You have been brought to a place where he can show you love. No more darkness. You are now in light. He's there to show you love. He has come to show you love. If you will be brought to the banqueting hall, all he wants to do to you is to show you love, to show you that he loves you. People, parents may have abandoned you. Friends may have abandoned you. You know, your place of work, they might say, oh, we no longer want your service. But the Lord has brought you to the banqueting hall to show you love. That's just what the Lord wants to show you. That's just what the Lord wants to show you. Oh, let me show you no, that point number five, which we find in verse six. Is if he, verse six, he said, his left hand is under my head, and his right hand God embrace me. Do you know how you carry a baby? Usually you put his head on your left hand and use the other one, you know, to embrace him and to cover him. That's how God is. That's the position you are at her in the hand of God. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if you are 80 years old, 200 years old, how whatever, uh, no matter how old, you are. Jesus is showing you love. He's come to show you love. He's carrying you like a baby is being carried. He's carrying you. I just want somebody to know, to feel love this morning. Jesus loves you. He cares about you. You know, you know, some of you may say, I'll be praying. Nobody is listening to me. Nobody, Jesus in his last is far away. He's not far away, far away. You are right there in his hand. And he's using your hand to cover, to embrace you. You are his son. You are his daughter. Jesus loves you. That's all he just wants to do is to show you love. So you'll be brought to a banquet to your to show you love. He so you will take his left hand to carry you. And the other hand, with the right hand, he cover you, he's embraced. You are on the, under the embrace of the Lord. Make no mistake that the, the hatred that, you know, you know, hate speech and the rest that people might be, you know, uh, you know, no, 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 releasing upon you. That's not for you. That's not for you. Jesus loves you. He goes, you know, the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? If Jesus loves you and he's showing you love, who can tell you I hate you? Some people, they tell you, I hate you. And you want to go and commit suicide. Who are they? Did they create you? Who are they to say they hate you? Jesus loves you. What matters is that Jesus loves you. And there's a song that says, he loves me. I cannot say why. If you know he's singing wherever you are, he loves me. I cannot say why. Ah, oh, Calvary is that 
far from me. He loves me. I cannot say why. He loves you. He loves you. And you can't say why. He loves you. Conditional love. So that's our point number four. He cared for you. All right? At point number six, you find that in verse eight, the voice of my beloved. The voice of my beloved. Behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountain and skipping upon the hills. Leaping upon the mountains and skipping upon the hills. At point number six, he is able to make you to leap over mountains and is able to make you to skip over the hills. You listen to me. He's able to do that, to make you to skip. I don't know whatever mountain that is before you today and prophesy from here in the name that is above every other name, you will leap over that mountain and you will skip over that hill. Lift up your hand now, begin to say that prayer. I will leap over that mountain, or leap over every mountain, and I will skip over the hill. I will leap over every mountain and I will skip over the hill. Go ahead and begin to pray that prayer now. Go ahead and begin to make that declaration. I will leap over that mountain. I will leap over every mountain and we skip over the hill. I will leap over every mountain and I will skip over the hill. I will leap over. Go ahead. I want somebody to pray. I want somebody to pray. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. I will leap over every mountain and I will skip over the hills. I will leap over every mountain and I will skip over the hills. I will leap over every mountain and I will skip over the hills. This week that you are entering, this month, 2020, in the name of Joe, you will leap over every mountain and you will skip over every hills. You will leap over every mountain and you will skip over every hills. You will leap over every mountain and you skip over every hills in the name of Jesus. You leap over every mountain and you skip over every hills. He's able to do it. Who is able to do it? Your creator, Jesus, will do it for you. That's the prophetic word we receive this morning. Leaping over mountains and skipping over hills. The Bible says when the Israelites saw the Red Sea, and Moses prophesied to them, say, the Egyptians were right behind them, and the Red Sea was in their front. And, and Moses proclaimed and said, the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more. I make a declaration for you. That the mountain you see today, you will not see them anymore. The hills you see today, you shall see them no more. In the name of Jesus. Then point number seven will be a question to you. How do you reciprocate his love? With all these six things I told you on this passage, how do you now reciprocate his love? How do you reciprocate his love for you? How do you reciprocate his love? How do you reciprocate his love? This passage is illustrates his love, the love between a man and a woman, which is symbolic to the love between Christ Amen. and the church. It's symbolic like love between the church, Christ and the church. It's symbolic. So, how do you reciprocate his love? How do you, how do you return back his love? This passage shows the love between two lovers. Expectation, love, God, Jesus also expects you to love him back, to care, to think about how, how he cares. You know, he expects you to be committed to the relationship. Jesus will expect you to be dedicated to him. Jesus will expect you to be faithful, to show faithfulness to him as he's faithful to you. Bible says, he that called us is faithful. Jesus, we expect you to also make a sacrifice because he made a sacrifice by going to the cross for us. He says, when we are on fire, he will be with us. That's like he told us in the beginning of this message that the mountain, he will be there with us. In the valley, he will be there. In the midst of the woods, he will be there. In the midst of the tongues, he will be there with you. How do you reciprocate his love? That's our message this morning. That's the question that we have for you. How do you reciprocate his love? In return, have you shown that you love him? Have you been able to show that you love him? Have you shown that you love him? Eh? Do you come, you know, do you come about Jesus? How do you relate with Jesus? 
by your actions. Does your actions show that you love Jesus? Do your actions show that you love Jesus? The Jesus action shows that he loves us. And that's why he said, in mountains, I will be with you. In the valley, I will be with you. Some person say, oh, I'm broke. I have this challenge. Jesus is no more there with me. No. He's there with you in the mountain. He's there with you in the valley. He's there with you in the woods. He's there with you in the midst of tongues with you and your family. I do reciprocate his love. I do come to, I do reciprocate his love by your actions. Are you committed to him? Are you committed to him? Are you dedicated to him? What's your dedication level to him? Are you faithful to him? Are you faithful to him? Are you faithful to him? You know, when they say in a marriage a woman is unfaithful or a man is unfaithful, it means that there's an act of infidelity. If this passage we read was used to describe our type, our type is symbolic about the relationship between Jesus and the church, is there act of infidelity in your relationship with Jesus? Immoral behavior, wardom, God will describe in the book of Ezekiel and say they've gone to Wardon, how they have sojourned and goes to other gods. That's Wardon. When you go to other gods to look for help, that's Wardon. When you do things that Jesus didn't ask you to do, that's Wardon. That's acts of infidelity. That's not a way to treat a lover. That's not a way to reciprocate your love. To somebody who so loves you and delay himself, laid down his life for you and died for you, that's not a way to reciprocate the love. Can you make sacrifices to continue to follow him? And your place of work, can you make sacrifices? Or you will betray Jesus, like Judas betrayed Jesus. Are you going to betray Jesus? They ask you to give right, you betray Jesus. Are you going to betray Jesus? Libro do Boko Sita la Rabashana. Are you going to betray Jesus in your place of business? When people are laughing at you, do you betray Jesus? Oh, they say, ah, he has come. Jesus, Jesus, every time, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And because of that, you decide to begin to play that. No! Is that what you're going to do? That's act of infidelity. Love is sacrificial. What can you give up for Jesus? What can you give up for Jesus? What can you give up for Jesus? Jesus gave us his truth to come for you, to show you love. What can you give up for Jesus? Can your action describe that you love Jesus? Can your actual describe that you love Jesus? What can you give up for him? Do you love him? Do you love him enough not to compromise your faith in your job, in your business? Do you love him enough? Can you love him enough not to compromise your faith? Can you also say, I will not compromise my morality for Jesus? Can you do that? The point of death was very difficult for Jesus. But still, Jesus went to the cross painfully. What can you do painfully for Christ? You are crying, but you are all eyes, all tears, but you are still listening. You are still saying, Lord, I just want to love you. Because of that, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to compromise. Some people have lost sense of morality, lost Respect. They've lost all of that just because they want to please people. What can you give up to please Jesus? That's the message for you this morning. How can you reciprocate this a lot? Below, you will need to review your relationship with him this morning. That's why we are come, as we come to your communion table, review your relationship with him. Some of us will compromise sentiments. You listen to people, then you listen to God. And you say you love Jesus. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is not a religion. Pleasing people, pleasing pastor, pleasing whatever. In the church, you are one person, you know. And but when you go out, you are different. How do you reciprocate his love? Review your relationship with Jesus. Stop following Jesus as if you belong to an association. Following Jesus is not by, you know, like one is in an association. 
Stop following Jesus as if you are an association. And when you are in an association, even if you are not happy, even if you are you know, not happy, whatever, you still be doing some things. Your heart is far from the people, but you are there. Follow Jesus. Don't follow Jesus like one in an association, like religious spirit. No. Follow him because you love him. Obey him completely. Bible says, obey him completely. A love relationship where he will not hurt you and you will not hurt him. You will also will not hurt him. He will hurt you and you will also care about how he feels before any action. He is not hurting you. He died for you. So you also care how Jesus feels before you take any action. Man, we lost this morning. I submit to you afresh that Jesus loves you. As if okay, that love, a show of faithfulness in following him in truth. Jesus said in John chapter 4, verse 24, say, those that must worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Follow him in truth. We compromise. Because of our family, we compromise. We don't want to say the truth. You are hurting Jesus because of your family, because of your business, because of your marriage, because of one thing or the other. Elijah had to ask them in Mark and say, Choose this day who you will serve. If he's bad, you want to serve him. If he's God, follow him. Make your choice, make your decision. We must stop being religious. We must stop being religious. We must walk with our relationship with Christ. And show that we truly love him. Let everybody you love him. You know when marriage is done, do you know the reason why marriage is done openly? It's done openly, and people vows are taken openly, so that everybody will know this man is no longer available. This woman is no longer available. In the open, publicly, they profess their vows openly. Why do you show that you love Jesus? Nicodemusly, quietly, but in the open, you do something else. That's not love. That's not love. Reciprocate is a law for us. I told you the things he's doing for us. He'll be with you in the mountain, he'll be with you in the heat. That's what he says. In the means of tongues, he will be with you. In the means of many, he makes you special. He make, become an apple, he makes you special. He protects you. And many more that I discussed this morning, they grant you power to skip over mountains, and I mean to, to leap over mountains and skip over hills. He loves you to the point of dying for you. Are you reciprocating his love for you? So those that must worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. I want to stop here this morning where I ask you to review your relationship with Jesus. So this morning, review your relationship with Jesus. I want you to review your relationship with Jesus. Go ahead and begin to review your relationship with Jesus. I begin to bow your head as we come to the communion table this morning. What you're just going to do is to review your relationship to Jesus. Do I love him the way he loves me? Do I love him the way he loves me? Have I shown him so much to love the way he has shown me love? Yes. Yes. Ask yourself those questions. And based on that, and begin to yes, begin to review your relationship with Jesus. Now, if you know that you have been violating him, you have been, you have gone astray, gone to one thing or the other, you have not been doing what you're supposed to do. Yes, begin to repent. Begin to repent right now. Begin to repent right now. And say, Lord, I'm sorry, I've not loved you the way I love you. I'm sorry, I've not loved you the way you love me. I'm so sorry, I've not loved you the way you love me. I'm so sorry, I've not loved you the way you love me. I'm so sorry, I've not loved you the way you love me. I'm so sorry, I've not loved you the way you love me. I'm so sorry, I've not loved you the way you love me. I'm so sorry, I've not loved you the way you love me. I'm so sorry, I've not loved you the way you love me. I'm so sorry, I've not loved you the way you love me. I'm so sorry, I've not loved you the way you love me. I'm so sorry, I've not loved you the way you love me. I'm so sorry, i have not I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Lord. I've not demonstrated that I love you enough. Yes, I can so to robo shanda. I want you to begin to say, Father, I'm so sorry for all the compromises. I'm so sorry for all the way I have behaved. Yes, begin to say, Father, forgive me. Yes, yes, yes. Do that this morning. I begin to say, Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I've not shown you faithfulness. I've demonstrated infidelity. I've gone after other things. I've loved people. Yes, I'm married, supposed to be married to you spiritually, but I love more people. Yes, love people more than I love you. 
I've loved families. I've loved friends more than I love you. Oh, yes, Lord, this morning, this morning, forgive me. In the name of Jesus, forgive me. In the name of Jesus, I'm sorry, Lord God Almighty. Every other thing I have been married to that I appreciated more than you, Lord, this morning, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to divorce them. I receive grace to divorce them. You're going to be number one. If a woman is married, the husband is number one in his life. Yes, today I divorce those things. I divorce them. I divorce them. I divorce them. All the things I love, they be material things. Yet yeah, they're not allowing me to serve you. I divorce all of those things and I get hooked up to you in the name of Jesus, I divorce those things and I come to you, Lord. I surrender unto you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, I begin to bless the name of the Lord. I begin to give him praise. I begin to give him honor. I begin to give him adoration. Yes, give him praise. Just give him praise. Just give him glory. Thank you, Father. Yes, begin to say, I surrender all to you. I'm holding back nothing. I surrender all to you, O God. 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 I surrender. Forgive me, Lord. I've not loved you enough the way you have loved me. It takes two. Now begin to ask the Holy Spirit to come afresh upon you. Ask the Holy Spirit to come afresh upon you. Yes, to brood upon your, your heart. Yes, now to reconnect you fully to Jesus. To show you the embrace, the warmth of the Holy Spirit. Yes, a freshness upon your life. No wonder your prayer life has been trapped. No wonder you have been struggling. No wonder your communication, your relationship with God, your Bible study have been poor, your prayer life have been poor, even your relationship with people have been poor because you have not gotten right with Jesus. You don't say, I love you, Lord. I receive grace to love you. I receive grace to show you love, to reciprocate your love to me. Go ahead and begin to pray that prayer. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, blessed be the holy name. Ringa situ no bogo shanda rabahuria. Yes, se gede boria. Yes, se gede riga de bogo skede riba holy bogo shede. Yes, se gede riga de riga de riga de riga de. I'm just going to ask you know to sing this song if you can. Yes, I surrender to you. You sing that song. You surrender to. We told you nothing. Why you prepare? Prepare your cultural material. Bring them forth. Yes. Is it? Surrender all to you. We told him nothing. We told him nothing. Why are you not loving God? Everything I give to you. Told him. I surrender everything to you. We told him nothing. We told him nothing. Myself away. To I give myself away. Sing that song to him. Give yourself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Yes. I give myself away so you can use myself away. Myself away. Give myself away so you can you myself. I give myself. You give yourself away so that he can use you. 
Sing that song to the Lord. I give myself away. Say to him. I give myself away. So you and you. So then, I you need to enjoy the warmth of God. You don't use Jesus, but fall in love with Him in a relationship with Him. Ah, uh -huh. with all the matters, I surrender all to you. Ah, everything I give to you with all in my faith, with all in my faith, I give myself away. Ah, Mukusa Kalipo Kushaka Rabahali Kataka. I give myself away so you. And use me. I give my give yourself away to him. Be in love with him. It will be a relationship. A relationship. Enjoy your relationship with Jesus. Freshness. You don't struggle to reach him. Even before you ask, he answers you. As that song goes on in the background, bring out your communion elements. We are taking a communion or revival of relationship. Bring out your communion elements. Take the bread now. Today we bless the bread. This now becomes the body of Jesus. As we take this bread, we are eating the body of Jesus. We are entering into a fresh relationship, a fresh revival of relationship with him. And we take the wine. This wine is blessed. It becomes the blood of Jesus. The Bible says, as often as we do this, we remember his death in our body. Thank you, Jesus. Today, they are both blessed. Take it and go into a place of prayer. Now. Give your family members. Go ahead and begin to sing this song. All they want is him. Yes, the revival. The reconnection. The reconnection. With Jesus right now. There's a reconnection with Jesus. There's a reconnection with Jesus. Yes, all you want is him. Yes, the reconnection with him. Give up everything and let it be. You must give up everything for him to be able to walk with you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you have to be hungry and thirsty for him. Hungry and thirsty for Jesus. A hunger attached for Jesus. A love for his work. Love for prayer. Love for service of God. Love for him. Where is Jesus again in your life? You remember when you first met him? Let the Lord take you back to where you first met him. There's a song that says, take me back. Let the Lord take you back. Where you first gave your life to Jesus. Yes. All you want is him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do you know when you're in a relationship with Jesus, like a husband and a wife? They say the things. The husband doesn't even need to ask the wife. The wife doesn't even need to ask the husband before you can use it. Yes, because you're in a relationship. You are in a covenant relationship. Some of us struggle. We keep struggle. We believe until you pray. Your prayer will not be answered. You, the Bible says before you answer, I, 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 when you ask, I answer you. Because you're in a relationship. That struggle must end. The security is not to me. I'm going to pray with you now. This day, I ask there be a revival between your love for Jesus. 
for your Lord. The Lord grant you the grace to reciprocate your love to him. Show him commitment. Show him dedication. Show him faithfulness. Take away fidelity from you. Show him love. May the Lord grant you the grace. And as you begin to do that, these things we talked about will come upon you in the name of Jesus. They will come upon you. He will be with you in the mountain. He will be with you in the valley. He will be with you as a lily in the midst of tongues. He will be with you as apple in the midst of wood. He will be able to take you and cuddle you like a baby. He takes care of you. He helps you to leap to over mountain and to, you know, skip over the hills. He will help you to worship him. Your prayer life will no longer be the same. Your Bible will not be able to be the same. Your service life will no longer be the same. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the holy name. Jesus.